So in our next part, let's start adding extra attacks to the player characters. So we have a second sword swing attack and a third swing sword attack. And we'll be making it so that we can transition to those new attacks at a specific exit time. We'll talk about more of that. So we'll need to create a way that we can transition from attack one into attack two and then attack two into attack three. And we'll be setting up a exit time, a transition time and a trigger in order to set that up. And then we'll also make it so that if you do decide to attack a second or third time in a sequence, that will have scaling damage. So the second attack will deal more than the first and the third attack will deal more than the second. So let's start by jumping into the player prefab and I'm gonna go over to the animator and in the top right where I have the animation window, I'm gonna open this up and we're gonna create player attack two and player attack three. So let's create a new clip, player attack two. I'm gonna save this in characters player just save it in here as a dot anim file change the samples to 10 and then let's go into the art of the project and find the animation frames so under rv boss adventurer individual sprites let's grab everything for adventurer attack 2 and i'm going to drag those into the keyframe window so let's hit play to test it and there's our second sword attack now if we look at sword attack 1 you also see that the polygon collider needs to be enabled or disabled here so if we look at sword attack one, you'll remember that we have that polygon collider with a specific shape that we're enabling or disabling. So we need something similar on player attack two. But if I click on the sword attack child game object to see the outline of our collider, let's go to where the sword swing is. And you might decide that this shape doesn't exactly match what the sword swing is doing here. So we might want to create a secondary sword attack shape for our second attack and later our third attack too. So the different attacks will hit in different locations. For the time being, let's also create player attack three. So player attack three, change the samples to 10 and let's drag the frames for attack three into the keyframe window. So now we can hit play and see our third final attack. Obviously we can tell, obviously we can tell that the hit collider on this is gonna look quite a bit different than this sword attack, much lower to the ground. So a quick way of solving this will be to duplicate the sword attack and then enable or disable it depending on which attack animation we're in. So I'm going to duplicate and we'll have sword attack one up there. Duplicate again, sword attack two. I'm going to rename these to be sword attack two for the one that had the one in parentheses and sword attack three for the one that has a three in the parentheses. I can also take sword attack one and just add a one to it to make sure that we know that there's a sequence of numbers here. So as you could see in the sticky notes at one point, I decided to put the scaling damage into an animator parameter and then we would grab that in the attack script. But I think that if we're gonna be doing things this way where we have three different colliders each with their own attack script, it's much easier to just have a different number here for Sword Attack 2 and Sword Attack 3. Also, that allows us to set custom knockbacks for each one just by reusing the attack script. So Sword Attack 2 can be a 15 damage, let's say. Sword Attack 3, let's give it 25 damage and a 5 for the knockback. And I'll also change the knockback to 5 to make it a lot stronger. So the third hit will definitely knock back the enemy. So this method is just a lot more straightforward than using the animator parameters for controlling the attack so this method is just a lot more straightforward than using the animator parameters for controlling the attack damage and knockback. Now we just need to customize the polygon shape collider for each animation. So let's switch to attack two so we can see what it's going to look like visually. Go to the frame where we're going to have the player be hit and let's temporarily turn off polygon collider on sword attack one and sword attack three. Click on sword attack two so we know which one we're working with. Hit edit collider. And let's just reshape this to whatever we think would be good for this collider tab. And there'll be a limit to how far we want the sword swing to actually deal damage. I'm thinking somewhere around here is good. So we'll only damage on the so we'll only damage on the swing down, but not the draw back here for our sword attack to hit. So now in the animation player attack two, let's go to frame one. I'm going to add a property sword attack two. Make sure you're selecting the right attack object. Take the polygon collider, set it to enabled off at frame zero, and then find the frame where we are swinging, enable it. After that on this zero four frame, I'm gonna disable it. And let's make sure it's disabled at the end as well. Then we just need to make sure it's also disabled by default, which we can see clicking on it that it is. Uh, let's also go to sword attack one. So that's still disabled by default. And now let's set up sword attack three. So I'm going to enable it temporarily. Let's go to animation, player attack three. I'm going to add the property sword attack three, polygon collider enabled. 
let's disable it on frame 0, 0. Go to where we hit the target, enable it. The frame after, I'm going to disable it. And at the final frame, we're also disabling it. So now we just need to go to our hit frame, which is right here, 0, 2. Uh, let's go to the inspector, edit the polygon collider, and reshape it so that it matches the arc of our sword swing. Okay, I'm going to need a few more points. So something like this matches the shape pretty good. Maybe we want to go a little higher with this as well. So we could be a little more generous. Say something like that as the hit collider for the sword swing. So now we have sword attack 1 with that shape, sword attack 2 with this shape, and sword attack 3 with that shape. If you prefer a simpler, just more straightforward box collider, feel free to use that. And then just if the target's within the box, they'll get hit. That'll probably work just fine in 90% of circumstances as well. I just kind of feel like playing around with a more custom shape here for our character. So now just make sure all the polygon colliders are off by default. Go to the main frame. I'll check the colliders here as well. Sword attack, one, two, three. Got to make sure that's disabled. Okay, and now we can jump into the animator where we'll add the sword attacks to the attack state. So in animator, let's go out to the base state. You'll see the new animations, player attack two, player attack three. Going to select these, control C, jump into ground attack, control V to paste them in. Back to the base layer. I'm going to delete player attack two and three from here. Let's go to ground attack. And now we need to set up some more transitions. Okay, so from any of these attacks, if nothing is a follow-up attack after the attack animation is completely played, then I simply want to exit the attack substate machine the same way that we did with player attack 1. So I'm going to right-click, make a transition from player attack 2 to exit, player attack 3 to exit, and then I want to take each of them, exit time 1, duration 0, and then the other one, exit time 1, duration 0. So the idea is that if you want to progress into attack two, you need to press the attack key again before the animation already transitions out towards the exit. So let's right click on player attack one, make a transition to two, right click on two, make a transition to three. And the requirement here is that we use the attack trigger. So I'm gonna hit plus to the conditions and let's add an attack for the exit time, 0 0.75. So this means if the trigger is set, by this point, 0 0.75, or somewhere after here, I believe, uh, then it will try to make the transition into player attack two. But if we haven't pressed the attack key, by the time it reaches the end of the animation, then we simply exit and return to our normal idle walk cycles. So exit duration 0 0.75 and transition duration 0 0.25. I believe those are the settings I had, which uh, seems to work pretty well. So we'll do the same thing on player attack three. So plus, Let's go into attack, exit time 0 0.75, transition duration 0 0.25, and that should pretty much be it. So let's hit play and I'll see if our character can swing three times. So one, two, three. Yep. Okay, cool. And let's go and hit the guy. One, two, three. So our second and third attack hit. You saw that one did 15 and the other did 25 damage. For some reason, the uh, first hit isn't working right now. So let's go ahead and troubleshoot that into uh, player attack. Let's click on sword attack one. Let's go to the animation. So player attack one. Okay. Yeah, right. So here, here's something we've got to be a little bit careful about. When we rename our objects, it also messes with the animations in this window. So in order to fix this, I actually need to re-add the name of the object back into this animation. So I'm going to have to add a property sword attack one. Polygon, Collider, Enabled, and we just copy the settings from up here to down here. So let's see if I can just Control v paste that in. Okay, looks like it. And now I can delete the yellowed out sword attack and remove that property. And this is going to work just like it did before by the looks of it. So at least you can copy paste it. That's pretty cool. Let's hit play and test it out. So one, two, three. Yep, we got three hits going on. One, two, three. Now, one thing that we might not like is that our sword attack, the first two, actually knock the character back a little too far for the third hit to actually hit. So just as a design kind of thing, I might go into sword attack one. I might change the knockback to one. Sword attack two, change it to one. And then only on the third one do we get that strong five knockback. So let's hit play. 
Let's get hit, and then one, two, three. And then one, two, three. Okay, so when we hit play, and we have our little knockbacks on the night, we can see that it's kind of working, but it's also a little bit glitchy in a sense. So I think what might be going on is that when the knight returns to its hit state, it immediately reverses the direction on the velocity, since it's just instantly setting that new velocity. So what we might want to do with the knight enemy is make it so that it has to accelerate towards its max speed, rather than just instantly setting it, because I can see that right now it is a little bit wonky. So let's go to the knight enemy, and I'm going to open up its script. And let's add a new variable to the top, which is, which is going to be public float max speed. And I'll make that 3F. And then I'm going to take the walk speed and I'm going to make it walk acceleration. For right now, I'll leave it to the default value 3F as well. So what we're going to want to do is add the acceleration to the velocity when it's trying to walk until we, until we reach the max speed. And then it won't be able to increase its speed more than that. So in the fixed update method for the night, we're going to do a calculation function to get our x velocity. And this is going to require us to clamp between two values, so mathf.clamp. And so we need to start with the current velocity, rb.velocity.x. And then we're going to take the walk acceleration times the current walking direction. So walk acceleration times walk direction. Let's see, walk direction vector dot x. And then we're also going to multiply this by time dot fixed delta time, which will make it so that our increase in speed scales with a number of with the amount of time between frames. Okay, so this is getting a little long, so I'm going to move that to a second line. So we have the RB velocity plus the walk acceleration uh, times the direction times time dot delta time. Okay, and then we need the other two parameters. So that's going to be as the min value, negative max speed, and then the positive value max speed. Okay, so let's see. Why is that giving an error still? Embedded statement cannot be a declaration or a labeled statement. But I guess we can just take this and set it directly down here. So I'm going to replace the walk speed times the walk direction vector by our math calculation here. So let me organize it and put everything on one line. So to walk you through what's happening here. So we start with the current x velocity, and then we increase it in a certain direction based on if we're facing left or right. And as we increase the value, we limit it with the clamp value to the negative max speed or the max speed. So the negative max speed is just the max speed, but in the left direction. And then the max speed is the actual max speed, but also in the right direction. So we have a limit on how fast we can move to the left and a limit on how fast we can move to the right. And with the RB velocity Y, we leave that alone. That's just based on gravity. So we're only changing the x value here. Go back to the game view, hit play, and see if we get that acceleration towards our max speed. So the night won't. So if we go out and we hit play, we'll see that with the acceleration of 3, it barely moves at all. But if we change this to 30, it actually accelerates to the max value pretty fast. So I think that's what I'm going to test with. Let's do a max acceleration of 30. So the reason why with the 30 it takes so long to get to the max speed is because the time dot fixed delta time scales this down a lot as the uh, amount of increase between frames. So let's hit play and we'll get hit. Let's see how our knockback works. So we have one hit, two hit, three hit. And now when the knight regains its control after the hit animation, you can see that the knockback doesn't just completely go away and then it has some weird direction reversal. And just FYI, if you wanted the player character to work with a walk acceleration as well, you could do that. So if we hit play, and let's hit the knight a few times. And we can see it's kind of glitchy still. So for the hit to move, let's change the settings here a little bit. I'm going to turn off fixed duration. And let's say the, the transition duration is uh, 25%. Oh, I guess we need that as a float. So 0 0.25, exit time 0 0.75. So let's hit play and see how the transition exits. Okay, I'm liking that a lot better. It doesn't seem to be doing any glitches or randomly switching direction or anything like that. So that's much, much better. So on the night enemy, uh, we might also say that we can just increase the walk acceleration since we already have it there to a higher number. That way the night can reach its max velocity much faster. So let's hit play. Okay, I'll hit him a few times and our night's accelerating Pretty fine. Yep. 
So the main issue there is probably just having no transition duration on hit to move. I'm going to jump into the move and um, let's actually take the transition duration off of the run to attack. And then let's hit play and let's see if it can work well without that. Yeah. Okay, so the problem really wasn't the run to attack. It was definitely the hit to the move state. So we test our animations and yep, it's just working a lot cleaner now. So the walk acceleration wasn't really the problem there. I was sort of doing it live. It's definitely the hit to the run transition. But now you know how to script it where you accelerate towards a max speed rather than just ending up there instantly. So I think I like this movement a little better for the night. So I'm just going to keep it. But the main thing is just to test your animations and make sure they flow into each other smoothly. So transition duration definitely makes it a lot better there for the night. So after this video, ended up being making a few extra improvements to the night. But in the process, we did make the attacks on the player work nicely. They all have their own custom attack values, hit knockback values. And we transition into each attack by clicking the attack key um, an extra time. So I think I didn't really show it, but you can actually stop the attack by just pressing twice. And you see that it goes to the exit. So we can do a one hit attack, a two hit attack, or do the full combo for three hits. So that's pretty cool.